strongly advocate of civilization. So welcome. Chair Rita, thank you very much, and thank you, VJ, and the whole of Uniting for Peace. Can I just check you can hear me clearly? Yes. Well done. Fantastic speakers, and uh, a great deal of them, too. Just to reassure you that I am the very last. Uh, it's an honour to be the last. It's also rather a frightening responsibility as well, because I've got to take this whole thing forward somehow. Can I just say that Luke was meant to be speaking with me, Luke Addison, but very sadly he can't be here. He is, um, has got a, a serious family issue, so he's really apologetic to you. Uh, so that's even more pressure on me. Looking at this audience this afternoon, I'm imagining that I'm not the only one who is old enough to remember Kenneth Clark's civilization. You remember Fantastics 1969 BBC series uh, and the book. Uh, I read the book. I'm a cultural historian. I had to read it, uh, and it was inspiring, no doubt about that. And of course, now we're in the middle of civilizations, aren't we? So we're sort of reassessing what we think of, of what that was about. However, I want to uh, quote from the very end of that book, which you may not remember at all, and it went like this. I quote, I said at the beginning that it is a lack of confidence, more than anything else, that kills a civilization. We can destroy ourselves by cynicism and disillusion, just as effectively as by bombs. Then he quotes Yeats, so he goes downhill in a way, and listen to this. He's, yet this is Yeats. <laughs> Things fall apart, the centre cannot hold, mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. The blood-dimmed tide is loosed, and everywhere the ceremony of innocence is drowned. The best lack all conviction, while the worst are full of passionate intensity. Wow, that rings true today, doesn't it? I hope not. Surely just the opposite. Big yeah. and... Enthusiasm that's come here today. Well, let's hope so. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> these are his final words. His final words are these. And this is Kenneth Clark. The trouble is that, that there still is no center. The moral and intellectual failure of Marxism has left us with no alternative to heroic national, uh, um, materialism, and that isn't enough. One may be optimistic, these are, this is his final <coughs> sentence, but one can't exactly be joyful at the prospect before us. Okay, you may not agree with what he says about Marxism, and I think a lot of people would say, well, it was never really tried or tested. Uh, but that is an incredibly negative way to finish off a book on civilization, and one which was uh, generally pretty optimistic and upbeat. He talks about the Yates, he mentions the Yates pretty um, down key, he talks about a sense of chaos, and he talks about the centre, and it is the centre that I really want to address this afternoon. Um, I imagine that uh, people in this room, predominantly, more than maybe I would estimate 98% of the population of this country, have a real sense of how desperate a situation we are in now. In a sense, the word that's used is often capture, so that in every single department of culture, um, there has been capture, an almost takeover of so much of our democratic institutions and our culture in general. Um, so, so that now there's actually a sense that uh, we are ourselves uh, decentivized or demotivated uh, or desensitized even to the present situation. But there is hope. Uh, we've heard fantastic amount of hope today, no doubt about that. Um, and I want to talk to you about an initiative. Uh, which I think is extremely exciting, uh, and I'm lucky to be the advocate of today. Uh, there are 12 funding advocates for civilization, as it's called. Um, that's a coincidence, by the way. Um, and VJ and Bernie Holland are two of those uh, founding advocates, very quiet, working below the, um, the radar. Uh, there is a standing committee of which uh, Luke Addison is actually a member, again, working very quietly. But there are advocates, signed up advocates, who include, now listen to this, Professor Kevin Clements, who was the superhero behind uh, the Global Peace Index. Well, he was certainly the brain behind it, an extraordinary man uh, who lives in New Zealand. Jonathan Porritt, the environmentalist of great fame. Peter Tatchell, 
of course, the human rights activist, and Helen Browning, who is chairman of the uh, Soil Association. Um, and uh, that brings me to the subject of the home, uh, because you might say, well, look, why the environment? The environment is absolutely integral to a holistic understanding of where we're going, is it not? You can't really leave it out. So, what I want to do now, if you will excuse me, because I've got limited time and in order to keep right to the point, is literally to read to you a statement that was sent by us to VJ specifically on behalf of United for Peace, and you can judge it for yourself. Here we go. Uniting for peace undoubtedly functions very effectively. However, in a fast-changing world, relying less on specialist gatherings uh, of individuals and hard copy communication, it has become much harder to draw committed converts. Such organisations also experience isolation with views counter to the established narrative of the military-industrial complex, a phrase inadequate to describe an international corporatocracy now dominating energy, banking, politics, law, the military, media, and much education. To build an understanding of the whole that is neither factional nor divisive requires a single point of agreement between diverse but equally valid organisations, of which this poppy is a very good example, and I notice that Frank is wearing his, and he's actually got a middle. Mine has lost its middle, which seems a bit unfortunate with what I'm talking about. While celebrated for their variety and individual strength, I'm talking about all the organisations of which we're wonderfully represented today, unless these organisations can unite to progress a shared objective, they can never compete with the vast resources of a prevailing establishment. They will always struggle to fashion an alternative narrative towards what is often termed the new paradigm. The Soil Association, that is a very good example. We've all got items, I'm sure, that have the Soil Association logo on them. There's one I've got. Is an example of an initiative just as much about an ideal as prescribed chemistry. Its logo is therefore applied to objects as an ethos uniting separate products as part of a unifying movement, with the status and profile this implies. This ethos is about husbandry and love for all life on earth, and a core value shared by movements for democracy and peace as a part of a recognised whole. You still with me? With the same unifying ethos, the initiative Civilization aims to promote an awareness of the true meaning of respect, to enhance rather than conflict with established organisations. It believes that promoting the culture of respect leads to a better understanding of democracy and peace, an ethos it in turn shares with Uniting for Peace and many other caring organisations and individuals. But because it is not an organisation, or in the Soil Association's case, a product, civilization has the ability to unite disparate movements and understandings <coughs> under a single non-partisan ethical banner. The clear and simple ethos summed up as the fundamental right of all to the dignity of respect could be used by uniting for peace to give a core value. This allows for the constancy of a strong, well-defined ethos in a changing world demanding shifting positions and directions. It also allows uniting for peace to collaborate easily with other organisations which share this understanding. It is a vital attribute for building bridges towards the consensus required to achieve broader cultural change and is effective in hostile environments ir irrespective of the division of ethnicity or creed. The alternative looks more like a world of ever-increasing confusion, division, injustice, violence, debt and environmental degradation. Moving forward would, of course, require a consensus amongst this, uh, for this approach from the committee uh, and membership of Uniting for Peace, and if achieved, discussion of a strategy for its progression. This strategy would likely involve creating a wider consensus of the like-minded, able to vote, campaign, assemble, or even opt out, uh, en masse where necessary, from the status quo. Possible transglobal models, uh, best when non-party political, have been the movement for Indian independence under Gandhi, 
the attempt, attempts of non-violent, uh, the, sorry, the black civil rights movement under um, Martin Luther King, uh, or even the highly effective Jewish group identity. Some recent attempts at non-violent social change, including those inspired by Dr. Jean Sharp, already mentioned by VJ, have failed uh, under attack to maximize cohesion through an effective group identity, uh, as he prescribed. But when clearly directed, and perhaps additionally motivated by current desperation, modern communications have the capacity uh, to correct this to an extent not fully realized. End of statement. So in conclusion, civilization is not an organization. That's the very point. It's an idea. It's holding an idea. And it goes back, as has been mentioned today, to the idea of the individual. It starts with each of us uh, and moves on. Uh, and therefore, when each of us changes, sometimes a very small change in our head about what matters, then no one around us can remain the same. That's that famous adage. Um, because, this is the reason, the military-industrial complex, as it's often quite simplistically termed, um, has the ability, has the control, we'll call it a corporatocracy if you like, um, to uh, control us in almost every other respect. In fact, it now have, has what I rather like um, to use the term uh, Medici vicious circle. Are you familiar with this? <coughs> Uh, I'm a cultural historian. I lecture about Henry VIII and the Pope at the time, Clement VII. One thing about Clement VII was that he was a Medici banker, become Pope. But he used his money to get political power and used his political power then to get uh, more money. That's the Medici vicious circle. We wouldn't know anything about that today, would we? <laughs> but the problem is, as I mentioned before, the propaganda under which we labour um, and um, that now there is control even of social media as well. So that was under our control, but now it isn't. The problem with social media is that the intention was that it would uh, give us new opportunities to cooperate. In fact, it seems to be doing exactly the opposite. Um, and it is creating, the result is religious, social, ethnic, and political division. Um, and uh, at this point, I think it's only fair for you to look at me and say, oh Lord, here's another old, white, privately educated man uh, telling us what to do, uh, when, to be honest, aren't they the ones that caused all the trouble in the first place? <laughs> However, that would be prejudice, wouldn't it? <laughs> because I may be all those things, um, but um, that doesn't do justice to the situation. And prejudice is something you will never get rid of, uh, but we can try to neutralise it as much as possible. And this, I would suggest, is the only way. We need to look back at the centre. There's no point looking towards peace and how we get it if we don't remember the fundamentals um, and civilization infers this center. It gives the center back, uh, and therefore it cuts across your religious inclinations or your um, atheistic inclinations. It allows you to cross between the two. So it believes in, and I quote it again, the fundamental right of all to the dignity of respect. If you think that through, you'll work out what that means. It means you can't judge people. Uh, or be judgmental about them, put that way. We all have to judge people, but it's whether you are judgmental about them. Uh, you can't condemn them, and if you can't condemn them, you can't be violent against them. That makes war impossible, because you can't set them as apart, as slightly different. Can we unite for peace? To be honest, Frank, I'm really not sure whether we can. I'm not convinced about that, but what I am convinced about is this is the only way for us to unite underneath. This is classic Gene Sharp, actually. Underneath, we need to unite. We need to be able to come together. And um, Because all my research uh, and writing Evolving the Spirit and all the years since it uh, has it, uh, made me perfectly clear that this is the only way to do it. And it is happening. And so here we are today. Um, uh, there is surely a way in which we could immediately come together. Um, there's a website for civilization. You can go and see that. Or perhaps we could take a lead here, because here we are pontificating. Maybe if all of us were able to unite for peace between us, and then we'd start something in motion and we could move on from there. Thank you all very much indeed. <laughs>